Kirk Jung here from learninggolf.tv. Today presenting my single plane golf swing learning system that I've been teaching for over 20 years now. And I've basically boiled it down to the simplest possible format. This information can all be customized to fit every individual golfer. And I'm sure that it's the easiest way you could ever learn to swing a golf club. Whether you're a beginning golfer, a senior golfer, or anywhere in between, uh, this information will help you to play your best golf possible. And that's because it's based on how we set up to the golf ball and putting you in a position for what I call set up for impact. We're setting up so that attaining a great impact is easier versus conventional golf where you're taught to set up basically with your hands below your shoulders and the club at an angle. With setting up for impact, we're gonna set up with the club on the same plane or in the same position that we're going to be in through impact. So I'm gonna present my seven step program. The first two steps show you how to set up properly to the golf ball and steps three through seven will show you how to go about learning the golf swing. For each step, I'll also be putting a link below in the description so you can jump ahead to uh, any of the steps that you choose and also for future reference, if you wanna come back and see step three, which is finding your ideal impact position, which differs from person to person or any of the drills, you can jump and link right to those positions in this video or you can scroll ahead in this video at any time. This will be a pretty long video I'm giving you all my information here for free, basically because I want as many people possible to try this simple method. And for those interested, I also offer schools, uh, which you can find on my website at learninggolf.tv, as well as an inexpensive membership program, which allows you to submit videos for my review and full email support as well. We're gonna jump right into this, starting with step number one, which is grip and how to hold the golf club. Step one is very important, obviously. So the way that we put the hands on the golf club can differ a bit from person to person based on hand size and grip size and other factors. And basically how you play golf your whole life, if you play golf with what's considered a strong grip your whole life, then I would like you to keep that starting out. If as you go on and start doing drills, the ball starts uh, curving for a right-handed golfer to the left, then we would make an adjustment to the grip and go more to the neutral position that I'm going to use as the baseline neutral grip for this concept. And so starting out, when we put our hands on the golf club, we need to make sure that we're able to create an angle between the leading arm and the golf club. And this is very, very important. So I'm gonna take the club and hold it like this and then in this position, I'm gonna to check to see that the leading edge of the club is horizontal here. And in this position also, the back of my leading hand is flat. So I could put a glass of water here and the leading edge here is also flat. So it looks like this, or if I went at an angle, this is matching basically, the back of the hand is matching the aim of the club face. So when I do this, I'm making sure that I can get close to a 90 degree angle up like this. We don't need, we don't want more than 90 degrees that would make it uncomfortable here in the setup. We also don't wanna to go too diagonally through the hand like this, as that would put the club or make it more difficult to create leverage in the golf swing. So basically it's going through the hand like this. And you can see it's kind of in alignment here with my thumb and going across the hand. This way it's not in the lifeline it's going across the lifeline. And you can see if I was gonna reach out, I fit the club into my fingers like this. I find the position where it fits comfortably in the palm of my hand, but with the fingers wrapped around. So I hesitate to call it a palm grip or a fingers grip. It's basically in between. The most important point is that the orientation of the club to the leading arm is what's most important. We want to have the club set up so the grip is pointed underneath the leading arm like this. We don't want it out like this because if we come into impact as we should, 
then the club is going to tend to be open and in order to hit a straight golf shot you're going to need to manipulate the club face so we want to make sure that we we hold it like this the club here is square the back of the hand is in a neutral grip towards the target if you catch yourself and you're more this way that's fine uh, let it be a little bit stronger and again we can always adjust later if the ball does fly to the left but a lot of you have been swinging for 20 years with a stronger grip position and your body is used to making the move necessary to keep the club face square through impact so my goal as is always that we improve going forward that from one day to the next that you hit the ball better not that we take steps backwards or that we have to practice for six months don't play golf and all that i just don't like that i disagree with that philosophy and i've worked for many years when people come to a lesson my goal is that you hit the ball better when you leave the lesson and it's the same here that i want you to improve you watch this video and you implement the steps necessary for your game and you improve not that you go backwards if you're going backwards or getting worse you're doing something wrong then you can send me a video through my membership program it's very inexpensive and i can guide you in the right direction so you don't waste a lot of time doing things wrong in my experience uh, people get one part of the setup wrong and they're compensating for that and that's why they're inconsistent so you need to get every step correct it helps to use video to be able to check on each step so the lead hand grip we talk about getting it in a position where we can get the wrist cocked a little bit here like this and the orientation of club neutral has it fitting this way we wouldn't go weak of neutral uh, which would have the back of the hand here and the club face like that so anywhere from here to very strong a Dustin Johnson type grip would be here so you can see the toes up here quite a bit uh, that would be also acceptable if you're hitting the ball straight from there uh, then there's no reason to change it if it isn't broke don't fix it and that's my philosophy I'm looking for fast improvement I want you to play the best golf of your life and I'm certain this program will help you to do that so moving on with the grip once we are comfortable putting the leading hand on the golf club and we want to see that we do this the same every time and I'm going to be going over as we get into the setup my setup routine which I check and make sure that I set up to the ball identically for every golf shot. But first we have a routine. We're putting the leading hand on the golf club. I would check the orientation every time, whether it's, it's here, which is neutral, or we go a little bit stronger. Uh, and that also enables you during the course of a round to make corrections if the ball's going right or left. Instead of thinking about your golf swing, we can just make a little correction to the grip and it will most easily help you get through the round and possibly even put in a great score. So once I have the leading hand on the club, I'll check it. Then we're gonna talk about putting the trail hand on the golf club. What we're going to do for the trailing hand is take it like this, take the arm, and we're gonna also bend the arm a little bit at the elbow, and that's basically bringing the upper arm against the body. And you can see the arm is like this, so it's a little bit bent here, looks like this. So a little bit bent and then what we're going to do is take the arm and we're going to basically supinate or rotate it away from the target like this so it's about a 45 degree angle and then we're going to put it on the golf club with a bent arm position that looks like this so my elbow's not touching my body but close and the upper arm is touching the body what we're doing is putting the trailing arm on the same plane as the golf club at setup and that's where it's going to be as you swing through impact so we're sliding the club basically or the grip into the hand so it looks like this we're rotated this way and I slide it under the fingers until the hand fits together I'm not going to wrap the hand over I'm going to keep it underneath I'm doing an overlapping grip which is my number one choice and we can slide it in so it's fitting in the hand. At no point am I gonna rotate the hand this way or pronate the arm. I'm gonna keep it in position here. The thumb is a little bit over. I feel this finger here, it's like a trigger finger as well. It's basically fitting together. For each person, this may be a little bit different, again, based on hand and grip size, that it's fitting comfortably here together. If you look here, 
it's just laying on top the little finger is laying on top of the index finger of the leading hand so it looks like this now um, many people that i teach in my schools or private lessons will have a 10 finger grip again as long as there's no space between the hands this is acceptable my first choice is though overlapping and then if interlocking if you can keep the same orientation that's also acceptable so once we have the trailing arm on the club properly and we're looking at the setup you could look in a mirror and what we want to see is that the trailing arm at least to the elbow is on the same plane as the golf club so if we laid the golf club on a tabletop the club and the trailing arm to the elbow would be in perfect alignment so you need to check yourself on this point this is really the most important point of the whole method is putting the trailing arm in this non-rotational position from this position here we're not going to have to manipulate the hands in order to square the club face so it's most important that we get this alignment correct as we put the hands on and i'm going to go through that in our next step which is the setup and the setup routine so continuing on with step number two which is the setup in step number one i covered the grip step number two starts with how we put the hands on the golf club and i do this as a routine i want you to develop this you can start at home make a step-by-step -step list of how you want to set up to the golf ball to make it a habit before you go to the golf course so it's always always very helpful to do things the same every time and what i do i start with my leading hand i hold the golf club like this so i feel that the club's in the proper position here it's in my hand like this and i check the orientation to make sure that my hand is in the neutral orientation that i'm used to playing with from there i start to set myself up to the ball and start looking at the direction that i want to hit the ball so i see a target in the background for me it's a white stake here at the end of the range and what i do i take the golf club here and i'll aim the club looking down at my toes towards the target and i'll adjust my feet so i'm sighting over the golf club here along my toes and i'll set it up until it's pointed at the target and in most cases for iron shots i'll go slightly more open from that because i'm hitting the ball with a slightly descending angle through into impact and so i'm checking the alignment here and this is very critical i see a lot of people that don't do this uh, or they have some other trick uh, looking at a point in between in most cases people doing that still aren't lining up properly i'm also not a fan of swing training aids or alignment aids on the range because you can't use them on the golf course I'm more in favor of developing here a habit that when we set up to the golf ball that I, the first thing I'm doing is orienting my body towards the target and aiming and finding the ball position. Otherwise, if you're used to practicing with an alignment aid on the range, as soon as you get on the golf course, you're gonna feel like you're lost. So, and I see that happen a lot as people uh, work on the range. And in most cases, people using an alignment aid are also not even square with the alignment aid or don't have the proper positions anyway or the alignment aids not even aimed at the target so develop a good habit aim yourself however you choose to do it you can always check yourself here put the club down along the toes and step back and see how you did and and then uh, when you're on the range you can always pick different targets to practice alignment i think it's critical to do this because alignment if you're not lined up properly you're going to have to compensate to get the ball to the target so if i'm lined up to the right i'm going to have to do something to manipulate the golf club to get the ball to fly in the direction of the target so lead hand grip alignment and as i'm doing that i'm also selecting my ball position so this all goes very quickly obviously i'm explaining each step here uh, but for me to get lined up on the golf course takes less than five seconds so i'll be doing this alignment and i'm setting the ball position and for this here i have a nine iron and i'm looking at a ball position here that's about between the middle of my stance and the inside of the leading foot so in here for a normal shot now if i need to hit a higher nine iron shot for some reason i'll play it a little bit more forward if i need to hit a lower shot 
I'll play out a little bit more back. If you're making impact the way I teach and the drills are teaching you how to do, the club's coming through pretty shallow through impact anyway. So that's one of the big advantages that the ball position is a little bit left or right. Uh, it's not gonna matter too much because the club base is staying square through impact anyway. So lead hand grip and you can should make notes, write this down, aim, check your aim and double check it if you need to, if you don't feel like it's correct. In a lot of cases, when you're set up perfectly, you're going to feel like it's not. So check the alignment, ball position. And from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend forward from the hips like this, trying to keep my spine in a neutral position. And I'm going to also shift the hips a little bit towards the target, which is creating a little bit of a tilt away from the target. I want my head over the space between the middle of my stance and the inside of my right foot. So it looks like this here, shift, and then I'm going to let the hands drop down. You can see the club is in an uncocked position. I want to see that I keep the trailing shoulder here back off the target line. I don't want to go out this way. So it looks like this. I'm going to reach in here from underneath. And again, put the trailing hand on the club as we talked about in the grip video. So it looks like this. I feel contact in the setup my upper arm to my chest so it looks like this set up and that's all I that's all we need to do so those are the steps I'll go through it the way I do when I'm playing and generally I'll feel the club in my hand here if it's my turn to play and I'll bring it there at the same time I'm gonna aim and choose the ball position my stance width is a little bit wider than hip width I want to be able to turn during the golf swing and stay balanced too wide. And what happens, people have a difficult time turning, so it restricts your turning in both directions, which costs people distance and accuracy because if you're not able to turn, it's difficult to uh, make good contact. And so I see some ridiculously wide stances, uh, which really cause problems. I'd prefer more narrow, uh, more like Bryson DeChambeau, uh, which makes it easier to turn and a lot of people especially as you get older it's much better to be more narrow so that you can turn your body and get more distance but also more accuracy because if we can turn we can make a better impact position with the grip leading the club head through impact so stance with this here the right foot the trailing foot is pretty straight here unless you have some hip issues or it's really hard for you to turn then it can be slightly open. The leading foot's always gonna be turned out about 30 degrees, so here's straight. The leading foot is a little bit turned out. The knees are a little bit bent. So, lead hand grip. Checking my aim. Ball position, knees are flexed. Hips move forward as I'm bending forward. Wrists uncocked, I'm gonna reach in from underneath, I feel the contact here. And that's one of my checkpoints. Some of you, if you tend to go through impact with the arms straighter, you may not have that contact there. So we kind of want to see how you go through impact. Uh, for me, it works a lot better, a little bit closer and with that contact through impact. So go through this step by step. It should only take about this long to accomplish. and I'm ready to go. One other point which we'll cover regarding setup is distance from the ball. And your distance from the ball, again, it varies from person to person. I find it absurd that somebody would tell you exactly how far you need to stand from the ball with a six iron or with a driver. Uh, the fact is I'm six foot tall and if you're copying somebody that was five foot six or six foot six, obviously there's gonna be a big difference as far as your distance from the ball. Your club length obviously matters. Your clubs are an inch longer or shorter. Uh, the lie angle matters. And all of that is very important. I talk about that in my club fitting information. But distance from the ball will be determined when we make golf swings and start doing the drills. We'll see 
when we make the proper motion without needing to drop down or pull away, then, then we have the right distance. We can see where the golf club strikes the ground and then that's your distance for that golf club. But I'll cover that as we get into the ball striking drills, which are steps five, six, and seven. So step number three, I'm gonna talk about impact. And obviously the method's name set up for impact. And when we're setting up for impact, we need to understand the difference between setup and impact and why there is a difference. And this is a really important step. So uh, you're gonna to wanna to come back to this and make sure you're doing this properly. Our goal, obviously, when we're trying to make impact is that we want the club face square to the target. We wanna hit the ball in the middle of the club face and we want the club to be moving in the proper direction at the right depth. We won't hit the middle, obviously, if we're too deep and hit the ball, hit it fat, or if we're clubs coming up into the ball, we hit it thin. So when we're trying to achieve a perfect impact, we need to see that a couple things are happening we need to see that the golf club is coming through impact fairly level. There's four very important points here that will happen if you do this properly. If you followed my setup and grip information, what we're looking for here, these four things will happen as long as the grip of the club is leading through impact and your body continues to rotate through impact. If your body stops, as it does for most people, I see in the downswing, the body stopped in this position and the club goes through, you're not going to be able to achieve all four points that are important for a perfect impact. And what we want in a perfect impact, we want the club, the, we want the grip leading through impact. And you can just pick up a golf club yourself at home and try this. If you pick the club up in your hands, and you, and you move it, keep the grip ahead of the club head like this, and just watch the club face. And you'll see that the club face stays pretty square. It may be on a slight arc around your body, but it stays very square. Now what I want you to do is let the club head pass the grip, and you'll see that there's a lot of rotation in the club head. The tour players are certainly doing this as well. They're all going through like this, to lessen the rotation of the golf club. They're doing it from a very difficult position to learn their setup position. Obviously they've hit millions of balls to make it a habit. So I'm simplifying it through the setup so that you can concentrate on perfecting your impact position so that you can become a consistently good ball striker. So as we get in and we're talking about that, so our goal is the grip leading and that's gonna keep the club face square. But we also will achieve, as long as we keep rotating the body, we can make it so that the club is coming very shallow through impact. So there's a longer flat spot here through impact. And that's because if I don't rotate, what would happen is the club goes down and runs into the ground, you hit the shot fat, or if you miss the ground, what happens, the body stops and the club head's moving up as you come into impact. So we need to continue to rotate through impact. And what that's doing is it's pulling the grip up slightly. This also aids as far as hitting the ball farther because of parametric acceleration. And it's something basically we're pulling up on. It's kind of like a whip and cracking a whip that we're pulling up. We're not thinking about that. The fact that the body's rotating and the leading shoulder is rotating up and away and that's going to help accomplish that. And the drills show you how to do that. You might say, you know, it seems complicated. It really isn't. If you practice and you follow the drills that are coming up, you will be able to do this. If you don't do it, what you're, you're sacrificing is this flat spot. And so you're going to always be fighting the tendency to hit the ball fat and hit the ball thin and you're sacrificing distance. So I really don't find it so difficult. People just mainly don't understand why we need to do the things that we do to hit great golf shots. Why do we need to turn? You would think if you're gonna throw a ball, I mean, you're gonna have be much more successful if your body's turning. And from my experience in working with people in my schools who are up to 90 years old, everybody can turn a little bit. 
and that's all we need is a little bit of turn to accomplish this and you could try this at home simply moving the club from here to here as long as you're turning and the grip is leading you can see it can stay pretty shallow pretty close to the ground versus uh, this where we do that you can see the club comes up and down because the hands are active and the body stopped and isn't turning so very important another important point is yes we're doing this properly and again it's the same concept we're turning through the shot the club will stay longer on the target line so the club head and the path can be pretty straight you could try the same thing we just did along a straight line on the floor if it's carpet there could be a line on the floor and you just hold the club there and you move you could see as long as you're rotating it's a pretty straight line if you're standing really far from the golf ball as i see a number of people then you see much more of a curve you see a lot more from inside to outside and it's really difficult to attain a straight path it's a lot easier standing a little bit closer to the ball like bryson dechambeau the more you get over the ball the easier it is to have a straight path so i think that's why he's such a great ball striker and has won so many tournaments he's set up on his impact plane he swings on a single plane and he has all of the advantages of the grip leading and turning his body through the golf shot so in attaining this turning action through impact it's important that we don't do things to restrict the turning of the swing obviously if you try to do something unnatural like keep the leading leg bent at impact and try to try to go like this and try to keep the trailing heel on the ground you're restricting turning your body's basically going to stop you're going to lose distance and it makes it harder to attain a good impact position and i've dealt with a lot of people i've worked with tons of people who have really worked on this i did it myself in the past and i improved dramatically the people I teach all improve very quickly once they get this idea out of their head that they need to keep the foot planted on the ground. Uh, you could just say if I was going to, again, throw a ball and keep the heel on the ground, it's extremely unnatural. It blocks natural movement. We don't want that. Basically, as we're trying to get into impact, the leading leg is bent and it's bent coming into impact, but it is straightening through impact. So it's straightening through impact and as we go through it becomes straight after impact so we do not want to try to keep it bent and i see a lot of people a lot of the swings i see are something like this it's obviously not only sacrificing accuracy but you might be losing 30 to 40 percent of your distance so just don't do that try to try to think about what would you naturally do here if you're trying to swing and obviously it's not going to be that it's not going to be that it's going to be something like that it's a natural motion we want both power and accuracy the fourth benefit is that to hit the middle of the club face what we need to do you can put the club put the ball on the countertop and hold the club straight you'll see impact would be here pretty low on the club face like this as soon as we move the grip forward, you'd see the ball moves up the face and it would be in the center of the club face. So to hit the ball in the middle, we need to have the grip leading the club head. So it needs to be something just only about like this. It doesn't have to be a whole lot, but it needs to be in this area. And we would first see the straight line relationship of the lead arm and club after impact. So in this area, and that's what we're going to practice in all of the drills is attaining perfect impact and it's very important to understand that's our goal that's our goal of the drills so keep coming back to the drills and practicing and trying to attain that position so what i want you to do now is take a golf club go through your setup the setup routine if you're in your house you could aim at something in the back like a picture or a chair uh, just to check your alignment we're getting in the ball position and then once you're set up and in your setup position all i want you to do is to feel your feet put some pressure against the ground to help you turn you can see my legs are slightly bent here i'm in my setup position 
And all I'm gonna try to do is use my feet and legs to rotate my hips towards the target. And I'm pretty flexible, so I can rotate quite a bit while keeping my head in position and maintaining the same spine angle. So you could look in a mirror, and you'd see the grip is getting moved forward because of my body rotation. The grip's moving forward like that. And it's also because I'm rotating, I feel the pressure against the ground. It's also going to start turning my upper torso as well. So both for me at impact might be rotated about 45 degrees towards the target. If you're only able to do this 10 degrees, that's fine. That's your limit of flexibility. We just want to be consistent that that's what we're looking for. That's our goal. And that when we make swings, that's our goal is before we hit the ball, we want to be in that position. My drills are going to show you how to do that. And if you practice them properly, you're going to be able to improve your impact position. Improving impact is what it's all about. I see people working for years and years and years on how to take the golf club back. Uh, they're taking inside and over and uh, trying to take up uh, 500 positions on the backswing. Uh, for me, it's about working on impact. Once we get the setup correct, it's working on impact. In some cases, we do have to work on, on making sure that instead of the hip sliding on the backswing that they turn in, I'm going to be covering that in the drills which are coming up. I just want you to get a feel for what your individual impact position should be. And again, the four important points that we achieve with proper impact are less club face rotation, club stays square through impact, it's a longer flat spot, the best players achieve about an 8 to 10 inch flat spot through impact, which would create, instead of big divots, it would be more of a bacon strip type divot. We also have a straighter path through impact and we can hit the ball in the center of the club face. So this eliminates the fat and thin shots. You just need to stick with this. I spend a lot of time in my schools going over this and training this and we'll train this for, for many hours. So it's a lot of fun drills also for chipping and pitching. It helps in the bunker uh, and obviously full swing and driver this is all applicable. So it's important to understand, work on the impact, make sure that you understand it and, and make some movements through impact and then you can move on to the next step. So step four in my seven step learning program includes six drills which address each part of the golf swing. These drills should be learned before moving on to the ball striking drills. You should also have gone through the previous three steps of grip, setup, and learning your ideal impact position. So in step four, drills one, two, and three, basically you think of one third backswing, two thirds, and full, and then learning how to move the club into that proper impact position. Drills four, five, and six are again, just dealing with different swing lengths in the through swing, which is also very important to learning an ideal golf swing. So as we get into this, again, we're always going to want to go back, making sure that we're holding the club. Ideally, now that was in step one, or I'm basically checking to see that I'm set up, that I'm aimed properly. And even doing the drills, I would check my alignment, making sure that I'm set up properly. I got the, the hips moved over. I'm getting the arms in the proper position. So I'm gonna go through steps one, two, and three first. The goal of these drills though, is always to get into the impact position so that it looks like this. So the grip is leading through impact, making sure that my head is staying in position. My hips are turned. I'm not trying to restrict my feet or keep my feet flat on the ground at any point here. If you tend to come up a little bit more, that's fine. You can see that obviously has nothing to do with making you move up into the golf swing and it will protect your back from injury since we're able to turn better through the shot as opposed to trying to stay flat on the ground which will stress the lower back. So for drill one then all we're going to do from our setup position we're simply going to 
turn using the legs and make sure the hip turns in. The trailing hip needs to turn in. We don't want it to move out. We don't want the weight going to the outside of the trailing foot and the head needs to stay in position. So I'm simply gonna turn back to this position. You can see my leading knee has come out. The club's here. I haven't done anything with the hands yet. And I'm in this position here. And from here, all I'm going to do is go back to my impact position, trying to get my body there first. So I'm gonna feel like I leave the club here in this position as I start moving back to impact. And then as the body turns, it's gonna slowly move the club into my impact position. So you wanna repeat that drill number one a few times. So it's here to here. And then you can move on to drill number two. In drill number two, what we're going to do, same procedure, we're going to turn back, but we're gonna continue back, so it's gonna be about a two-thirds backswing, still making sure that the hip turns in, cocking the wrist, and then from here, we're gonna maintain this position. I still feel the upper arm against my body, and from here, what I'm going to do is, again, I'm starting with the legs. I feel like I'm leaving the club here, and I'm going to turn, and that turning is gonna bring the club in like this, and then I'm gonna let the club release, and there I am at impact. I'm in my impact position, which we learned in step three. So we'll do that a couple times, again, checking the alignment. Drill number two. So you want to do these drills slowly. For drill number three. We're just going to make your full backswing. You're going to go back. Turning, I'm trying to keep the weight on the inside of my trailing foot. Cock the wrist. And then shift. Turning the hips. So by the time we get here, I'd like to just stop here for a second and then let the hands release. And the hands should be more opposite your leading leg when we get to impact. And this is one you're gonna have to practice a little bit. It's really important to go step by step and get this one correct. As we go into drills four, five, and six, uh, it's gonna be the same concept. We wanna find our impact position first. We're gonna learn how the club should move through and pass impact. In this case, I won't use a ball. You could use one and push it out of the way, uh, but you could use a point on the ground. Again, alignment, important. And all we're going to do here, set up position, we're gonna turn the body to impact. You could also say, you could also do drill number one, find impact here. And so starting from impact for drill four, all we're going to do is let the club move along the ground here, moving forward until the club head is past the leading toe and in alignment with the leading arm like this or slightly ahead. So our goal is to simply move in drill four is to move here, impact, and to here. Just practicing basically a flat spot here to here. Grip would be pointed, you extended the club past the side of the body. 
I do drill number four a couple of times. Make sure the leading hip is over the leading foot. And then you can move on to drill five. On drill number five, we're going to again, we're going to be moving from our impact position through position in drill four, through drill four, and on. Continue rotating, keep the head in position as long as you can, and with the club pointed towards the target in this position and in line with your trailing arm. It shouldn't be up here, it should be right here. And you see my hips have turned more and I'm here in this position. The club, when it's going towards the target, will look like that. It shouldn't be here, it should be in that position. So drill five, again, impact, turning to here. Aim. So turning, impact, to here. That's drill five, trying to keep the head in position. And from there for drill six, we'll just continue rotating through standing up on the leading leg, trying to be balanced toward the target. You can turn your body through to the limit of your flexibility. Don't overstress yourself, uh, but you should see if you're flexible, you can turn through pretty far. If you're not, your finished position will probably have the chest towards the target. See that the trailing foot has come up and it's in this position. When we do drill six, we're gonna go through all, we can do four, five, and six together. So basically, looks like this. Four, five, six. Once you have a good feel for these drills in step four, you can move on to step five. So in step five, we're going to start using golf balls here with the drills. I strongly recommend though, making a number of practice swings before each shot. Check your alignment that you're lined up at something. I'm lined up at a white stake in the background. It's a little bit to the right of this red marker here. For some of these shots, I might be able to use shot tracer later. I'll have to see if that works or not. Basically what we're going to do, it's very simple once you understand the drills in step number four, drills one through six. For ball striking drill number one, all we're going to do is be moving from the position in drill one, which was here, so it's not very far. Again, the club head was below knee height, and then we're gonna move through to the position where we were in drill four, which had the club head just past the leading toe and the grip of the club just past the body. So if we lengthen the club, the club would never be pointed back towards our body in this drill. And so this is very important. And I, what, what I want you to do is try to relax your hands. We don't want to be too stiff as we do these drills. I want you to be very relaxed. Get yourself set up here. And I want you to simply move from here to here. That's a little bit too far from here to here. The ball should only move about 10 yards here, but I feel that I'm getting to impact here with the body. I'm using my feet. I feel the leading legs straightening, going through impact. And we just try to have a rhythm of this motion here. We're swinging on a single plane back and through. 
Once it feels good, we'll go to the ball and just repeat and hold the finish. So if we hold the finish here, we want to see that the grip is pointed to the side of the body. In addition, when we're making the practice swings, we should be noticing where we can comfortably strike the ground, that we're striking the ground uh, past the ball here, so it looks like this, here to here, but it's also gonna give you a feel for the distance from the ball. So I see the club is making contact here, and then I'm gonna move forward to the ball, keeping the distance the same. Again, I feel the contact. Again, you should have looked at the first four steps before this. Step one was the grip and how I go through that as far as the routine. And then the step two is the setup routine and just simply moving from there into finding your impact position. And then the drills one through six are all in step four. My hands are relaxed. Good practice swings. So advanced drills then what you can do, and it's very helpful for a lot of people, especially the trail hand version of this drill. So what we're going to do, ball striking drill one, but with the trailing arm, we're gonna get into our setup position. We're gonna remove the leading hand, and we're gonna hold with the leading hand above the elbow on the trailing arm like this, and then we're gonna make the same motion from here to here. You'll see here, you should see this space between the forearm and the club actually increases from setup. So it's setup, it's here. And when I go through, there's actually gonna be more space there versus left. So we don't wanna see this, we wanna see that. So I'll get in your normal setup position. I'm again just gonna check my alignment, setup. Trying to feel I'm getting into my impact position, my head staying in position, my hips turning properly. I'm gonna hold the finish. Went through a little bit farther, and that's why you want to hold the finish a little bit farther than I want. So it's really important to keep checking the finish, check your alignment and setup, go through the routine as you're practicing, and then do the drill. I want to feel like it's my body that's moving, my hands, my hands relaxed, even though I have just one hand on there, and I'm checking the finished position. So that was much better. Even if the ball wasn't hit perfectly, the motion was very good. Again, you want to get a feeling, set up position. Feeling of the swing. So I see where I'm hitting the ground and then I adjust. I need to move that distance to the ball. The last time I didn't move far enough into the ball. Now I am. That's perfect. And that's kind of how you want to work. The drills will be your guide if you're finishing in the right position. That's really important. And in the schools, we're working on perfecting these drills to make sure that everybody learns them perfectly and once that's accomplished everybody hits the ball better so a lot of people aren't aware when they're making a mistake with the drills and that's where video feedback is really important using the free v1 golf app sending in videos for my review it's part of a very inexpensive membership if you just want you need to have that feedback as we move in to the leading hand version of the drill again we're going to set up the same this is more difficult for a lot of people, but it should be something that you still attempt. Here's my setup position. I'm gonna hold now the leading arm above the elbow, and then I'm gonna do the same thing, is move from here 
to here and here I want to make sure the grips pointed under my leading arm like that and I've always had really good success after doing the lead arm drill and you can eventually make some longer swings with the lead arm drill uh, but I've had really good success hitting the ball after I do that. So if I do some lead arm drills and then make some normal swings, it works really, really well. So, very good. So those are the drills for step number five, ball striking drill one, the lead and trail arm drills. And I'm gonna move on now to step number six and ball striking drill number two. For ball striking drill number two, we're gonna be combining what we learned in the drills in step four, which were drills two and five. And so we're gonna get in our setup position. And then all we need to do is learn to move from in drill number two, we were here. And in drill number five, we were here. We're moving from here to here, here to here. Trying to hold this finished position, the club toward the target, and moving nice and slowly. So once I have the feel for it, I'm just gonna go nice and slow here to here. Get straight. I'm on the back of the range here filming. That's why the grass isn't so perfect. Uh, it's simply uh, the, from the sun, the position of the sun for filming, it's just a better position. So again, going through my full routine here for ball strike drill two, this is in step number six. I'm gonna use my practice swings as a guide. Also, I'm going from here to here, and I wanna see that I'm striking the ground in the right position. I should feel that I'm staying level with my body. I want the hips to stay level and my head to stay level as I'm making this swing. That's something you can always check in the free V1 Golf app. You shoot a little video of what you're doing. Some people do these drills at home in their backyard with foam golf balls. That's also great. Another one's perfect, dead straight, and the finish was exactly what I'm looking for. Another one dead straight. Perfect. So once you feel comfortable and you have success with ball striking drill number two, then you can move on. If you do struggle with ball striking drill two, then I would recommend going back either to the drills in step four and reinforcing the proper movement and then ball striking drill one in step five and then this drill again. If you're having success with this drill, then you can move on to step number seven. In step number seven, we're going to be doing ball striking drills three and four. And ball striking drill three is simply moving from the backswing of drill three to the finish of drill five. So ball striking drill two was two to five, which was a two thirds swing. Now we're making a full swing, but not moving at full speed and finishing where we did in the previous ball striking drill. So finishing in the position from drill five, which is here. So for ball striking drill three, we're moving from here to here. Move slowly at first. Pay attention to where your club's striking the ground. Check your alignment as always. So 
perfect. Check the grip, make sure it's correct. My grip tends to get slightly stronger if I'm not paying attention to it. And then the ball will fly slightly to the left. This one dead straight. Perfect. And I'll do these drills regularly, uh, especially starting with ball striking drill one. And I do a lot with ball striking drill two. And then I move on to the longer swing. But I'll always come back to ball striking drill two if I have any issues. Another one dead straight. So for ball striking drill number four, it's simply moving from drill three to drill six. So I would practice that a couple times first, especially here going through to the finish. This is also great for warming up on the tee. A lot of people don't think about when they start swinging the driver, if you didn't have a chance to go to the range, about the speed the club is moving and the importance of a good follow through and finish. So in this drill, we're gonna try to finish all the way through. I'm going to move from here to here, making sure that I'm making good contact with the proper position on the ground first. So it's basically moving from drill three, which is here, to drill six, which is there. So perfect. Again, these make a lot more sense, these ball striking drills. If you watch the previous steps, one through six, to learn the proper position. Another one dead straight. So work step-by-step step through this program. I'm gonna have the videos individually step-by-step step, as well as a couple of bigger videos with all the information in one with links to each step so please subscribe here on youtube any comments or questions put them in the box below also visit learninggolf.tv to find out my upcoming school schedule as well as check out my inexpensive membership which allows you to submit videos for my review thank you very much i hope you have a great day